Hey guys, Pete here. Today's Game of Thrones Season 8 video is going to be about the end. The end of the season, the end of the series, and the end of the cultural phenomenon that has become Game of Thrones. This is not the video I wanted to make today. I've been working on something else, but people are still freaking out about the twist in Daenerys' story. And on the one hand, I get it. But on the other hand, I don't agree with it. So, so rather than put out my unpopular opinion, which I more or less did in my video yesterday, today I decided to focus on something different. And that is, what is the sweet part of the bittersweet thing going to be? We are definitely experiencing the bitter side of it. And George R. R. Martin has always said the ending would be bittersweet, so let's look at where that might come from. So Daenerys and Jon have been the center of the story, and where things left off in episode 5, it's starting to become very apparent that Daenerys cannot make it out of the series alive. There's always been this problem that her dragon makes her too powerful. Now that we've seen her use that weapon of mass destruction on the small folk and everyone else that lives in King's Landing, it's pretty clear that she'll have to go. So overall, this kind of leans towards the bitter end for both Jon and Daenerys. Personally, I like the idea of Jon leaving for the real north. I like him living out his days in a self-imposed exile with Ghost. I think that is somewhat sweet, at least in the sense that he's never liked doing what he is good at, which he is a warrior. He's a killer. He's good at getting other men to follow him into the fight. So going north leaves him some peace in that, at least in my imagined idea of what he would do. Some people believe that he's going to take the black, which at least at this point, we don't really know that there would be a Night's Watch. So I don't like that as much. It makes sense in that if he kills Daenerys, then, you know, he would have to do something to make up for his crime. But I still prefer the other version. Daenerys, like I said, can't really survive to the end of the game. So my hope is that her vision of the people never being subjected to living under the rule of tyrants will be realized after she's gone. This is definitely bitter for Daenerys herself. It's, it's bitter for Daenerys fans. I get that. My point is not to be insensitive in that. But for the common people, the small folk, the people that have been paying the price in this system that was set up by Daenerys' ancestor, Aegon the Conqueror, it's a pretty sweet deal. There is a possibility for life to get better. And that hinges on what is in place whenever the story is over. We don't really know that for sure but I think it's safe to say that anything that George R. R. Martin cooked up would not involve someone with the potential of being a tyrant ending up on that throne. I laid out what I think is going to happen to Daenerys in my video yesterday. I think it really makes the most sense for Jon to take her out. Of course, Arya is a popular choice among people as well. I'll get to Arya later in the video, but I just want to say for Jon, if he's the one to swing the sword, it does complete the balance. So, you know, he played a major role in getting people to fight against ice, the White Walkers, taking care of that. And then he actually had to deal with the human threat, of course, aided by the power that comes along with dragons and their dragon fire. But here, you know, it's a lot more difficult. He has to do something that he wouldn't otherwise do. He has to do that for the greater good for mankind, just like they did when they fought against the White Walkers. And it's certainly not happy, but it's sweet in the sense of, like, sweet, dude, you saved the world, you know? From there, I think we really have to look towards the secondary characters, and I think that an epilogue will play a part in that. I made another video like this a couple days ago for a different platform, and when I was thinking about things, I mean, obviously, Sam and Gilly, they seem like the top candidates for a happy ending. I definitely want to see what happens with them, what their future looks like sometime down the road. This has a lot of possibilities because Sam's close with John, Sam's close with Bran. When we saw them last, they were still at Winterfell. I don't know why they would really stay there beyond that. So I want to see them have a happy ending and I want to see what that looks like. I want to see where they end up. I want to see how many children they have. I want to see how they're prospering after the wars. 
the next thing that stands out to me when I'm thinking about this is the lowborn guys who played a big part in things turning out the way they did. Gendry is the first example. I think it would be great to see him down the road as Lord of Storm's End. I mean, he grew up in Flea Bottom. We watched his adventure. I mean, he deserves whatever good he can get for playing the part that he did. Davos is another guy that has come from humble beginnings and played a huge role in the series. The show never talks about his wife. It's almost like he doesn't have a wife in the show, but he definitely does in the books. Of course, he still has a son that's alive at the end of the books, too. So I don't really know what's in store for Davos. I think that he could probably play a role in establishing the new government or a new council or wherever that goes. But there's also a possibility that he can roll on out and go home and live with his wife and live out his years in retirement. Braun is another guy. He is not my favorite, but he is definitely a fan favorite. And I think that we're going to find out what goes down with him. People want to see him get his castle, and I think he probably will. But that should sweeten things up a bit, especially for his fans. After episode five, I really am rooting for Arya. After her talk with the Hound, after we saw her walk away from killing Cersei, choosing life, if you will. And then we had this great sequence where they have her show us the real horrors of war and the pain of the small folk and the way that war grinds the people down. And I read some negative reactions to this, like people didn't want that from her point of view, but I don't really understand those. She is the one who took us through the Riverlands and gave us that look into the War of the Five Kings. I mean, she's not the only character, but I don't know who else could really do that for us that's still left in the story. And it bookends perfectly for her. She lost her family. She had to live on the run, saw the horrors of the War of the Five Kings and the way that affected the regular people in Westeros, ran away to Braavos, became an assassin, became a killer when she had to. To be but at the end she walks away from it all and we had that great exchange between her and Sandor so I think that is definitely a sweet turn of events to put some sweet and bittersweet I hope that she doesn't kill Daenerys for this reason I hope she doesn't kill Drogon I hope she doesn't kill anybody else in the series if you want to know my opinion doesn't mean that she won't do those things but the original name for the final book was a time for wolves and I want to see a time for Arya where she gets away from the death that has been surrounding her for the entire stretch of the series. Tormund is another bright spot, I guess. Sometimes you can forget that Tormund is a redemption story as well. You know, he was killing people with the wildlings, like wiping out villages under Mance Raider. He came around. He's taken them back north to the real north. So that's pretty sweet in a way. While I don't love everything about what happened with Sansa in the last two seasons, she is one of the characters who has a sweet ending to a very bitter story. She ends up being what she wanted to be. She's well equipped for the position. She had a brutal road to get to that place, and that is a bright spot as well. So to sum it all up, I don't think there's going to be some kind of joyful or euphoric event that's just going to fill us with love and happiness and send us away with a smile. But I do think that the people will be better off. I think the threat that's been looming with the White Walkers will certainly be as neutralized as they are now. They seem to be non-existent. And I think that by making that full turn, by crossing that line, Daenerys has set things in place so that that there will never be another Targaryen that sits on the throne, so that cycle will be truly broken. In keeping with the idea of a time for wolves, I'm sure we'll see Sansa make it through, become the Lady of Winterfell. Of course, she's going to be on the wrong side of Daenerys, but I don't think that that's going to play out and be anything by the end of the story. I hope that we'll see Winterfell in the future and we'll see how the North has rebuilt itself. All of that comes at great cost, of course, but I want to see the family endure after surviving the winter.
And that is really where I end up. So let me know what you think. Where is that coming from? The sweet and the bittersweet. I think John embodies the bittersweet as a whole. He brings balance. He takes care of the existential threats. But there is a great cost and he has to sacrifice the one that he loves in order to make it happen. But yeah, let me know what you think. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I know what I'll be doing in a couple days time and I will definitely be making videos about the series finale. So check back for those. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you soon.